Hey everybody, welcome to Christy Dawn's Kitchen and today I'm so excited to share with you Shrimp Creole. This is one of those recipes that is perfect for a weeknight and it's also perfect for if you're having company over. It's one of those dishes that's very easy to do but it's very impressive. So I do want to share with you that this recipe actually comes from one of my mother's closest friends, Sharon Rao. And Miss Sharon, I have known her uh, since I think I was about three years old. And she, Miss Sharon and her husband, Mr. Linwood, are so special to me. They're, they're like second parents. And this recipe actually came from a cookbook the, from the Freedom JCs and JCS that my parents were involved with along with Miss Sharon and Mr. Linwood in the 70s and 80s. And I, I wish they continued to make those cookbooks because I just think they're the best. Um, it's always ones that were collaborated that everyone would put their favorites in and I don't know it just seems to be an art that is no longer with us so over the years I know my family did one for Cummins cooking I love this one it has a bunch of recipes in here from my grandmother and my great-grandmother I treasure this it means so much to me um, I have another one this is from Elders Baptist. This was the church that I grew up in and the church that where I was baptized. This is my home church. Love this one. And also, I have the one um, that my parents, this is the church that my parents were married in, was Middle River Baptist Church in East Baltimore. And um, this is my mother's home church where she was raised. And I just love it so much. It just has so much meaning. And... Uh, I just realized there's a note in here to my mom from my grandmother. So this is to Cheryl, February 1990 from mother. So we can keep eating your delicious cooking. So sweet. I didn't realize I was in here. So anyway, I hope we get back to this or, you know, sharing dishes that were important to us. That's one of the reasons why my father asked me to do this YouTube channel so I can share some of these special things. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring you how to make delicious shrimp creole. So, for shrimp creole, you need the following ingredients. One stick of butter, three stalks of celery, two large onions, two large green peppers, parsley flakes, cayenne pepper, bay leaves, salt, and we're also going to need some water, garlic, a can of crushed tomatoes, and shrimp. So the first thing I do is, is clean and peel the shrimp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and take all of the shells off. What I do is I normally squeeze the top here. I can pull it off a little bit. And it all comes right off like that. Now, I do save the shells, and I actually, later on, um, will make a seafood stock out of these. So, if you'd like to learn how to do that, I'm sure at some point I'll be showing you how to make some seafood stock. So, also, when you do that, you want to make sure that it's clean inside. Now, here I can see there's a little bit of dirt. And what that is, is basically the digestive tract, and we don't want that in there. We want to make sure that all of that is clean. I'm going to go ahead and take that out, get it all nice and clean, and there you go, a clean shrimp. And I always buy the frozen shrimp in the two-pound bags. There's always a chance that these are on sale. Whenever they're on sale and they have a good price, I grab them and throw them in my deep freezer in the other room. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And there you go. They're clean shrimp, ready to go. This is actually two bags, so it's actually four pounds. I know that's a lot of shrimp, <laughs> but like I said before, I have three teenage boys. They love this recipe, and it will be gone. So we're going to start on some vegetables now. Okay, it's time to do some chopping. What I like to do is put a kitchen towel down 
and then put my cutting board on top. This helps prevent it from moving around too much. So we need for this some chopped celery, chopped green pepper, and chopped onion. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the onion. And we need three cups of chopped onion. So as I showed you before in one of my recipes, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the bottom. And cut through the top. Remember, leave the root end on. Go ahead and peel this. This actually has a little bad spot on it, but that's okay. We're just gonna peel that part off. All right. Two onions ready to be chopped. So remember, you take your knife and you go down. Don't cut through the root. Make sure the root stays intact. Okay, put your left hand up, or right hand if you're left-handed. Cut through, and then down. left with very little waste. Onions are strong. Get this done quickly. All right, and I say that's about three cups right there. So I'm gonna get these scraps in the trash. So next I'm gonna do the celery. And how I chop celery, basically the same thing. I'm gonna cut off the ends that don't look so nice. I already went ahead and cleaned this with a, oh, there goes my phone. There's some pieces there that don't look so great. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut down the entire length of the celery. These end pieces here, these look a little wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut, I don't know, from like there on down, just to thin them out a little bit when we chop, okay? Now I'm gonna cut right in half. Bring them all together, okay? And start chopping. Dude, I can still smell the onions. <laughs> One, okay, 
again, a little bit too wide. So we'll go ahead and slim those down a little bit, cut those in half. Okay, so I'm gonna continue cutting this last one, uh, this last stalk of celery, and I'll be right back after I do blow my nose from the onions. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, I'm all cleaned up. Let me go wash my hands real quick. That was a strong onion, or both of them are. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the last one. Hey, Matt. Matt just walked in the door from school. Okay, this is the easiest way that I have found to dice up a bell pepper. They can be a challenge at times just because of their shape. What I like to do is cut off the top. Usually the stem will just go ahead and come off. This is perfectly fine. We can go ahead and use that and chop that up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the bottom as well. Again, this is fine. We're gonna chop that up. Then I like to cut down either side across from each other. And it's very easy then to clean out any of the white, any of the seeds. You want to get that white, as much of the white out as possible because it can tend to be a little bitter. So we'll get that out and then we're going to push it down. clean as you can, push it down, okay? And then what I'm going to do, I'll just do one at a time. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut strips. Okay. And this one. Okay. And this one. Turn them all sideways, line them up like little matchsticks. Okay. And then we're going to cut down into dices. So these and these, I'm just going to kind of do the same thing. Let's go down. Be real careful. Turn them. Oops. They will fight you. And there you go. One green pepper diced up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start assembling all this together. So I'll be right back. So I went ahead and put the stick of butter in this pot along with the onions and the chopped celery. And I'm going to put the rest of the bell pepper in. And this is what's known as the Holy Trinity. 
in Cajun and Creole cooking. I know in French cooking, it's called um, the Amiroquois, uh, which is normally onions, celery, and carrots. But in Cajun cooking, they substitute the carrots for the, I should say, they substitute the green peppers for the carrots. So this is gonna go back on to the stove on a medium heat until it they all get tender. So I'll be right back. Okay, these have been cooking for about, mm, I'd say about maybe nine or 10 minutes. They look great. You can see them, they're very, very tender. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add in some garlic. And I didn't wanna add it in too soon because I was afraid it was gonna burn. So I need, um, four cloves. So that's about two teaspoons. About one, two. And we like garlic, so that's okay if it's a little heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up. Oh my goodness, the smell. I don't think there's anything better than the smell of butter with the vegetables, with onions and garlic. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, so next. So that was the hard part of the recipe. Now it's just adding things. Super, super easy. So we're going to be adding now. I'm going to turn the heat off. We need, the recipe calls for 15 ounces of tomato sauce. I didn't have tomato sauce, but I did have crushed tomatoes. I have 28 ounces, so we're close enough here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Like I said, just remember, I'm doubling this. So when I list the ingredients, it's going to be for a single recipe. Okay. All right, that looks good. Stir that up. Okay. Now I need two cups of water. Add that in. And the seasonings. So our seasonings are four teaspoons of parsley, which is one tablespoon and one teaspoon. So that looks about good. That looks good. A quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I have an eighth teaspoon here, so I'm gonna do this twice. And I'm gonna go a little heavy because our family likes it hot. And we need four bay leaves. Now, bay leaves, make sure it is very, very important that you keep track of how many bay leaves that you put in because we're gonna have to take them out. And the reason why is, I know there's been rumors that these are poisonous. They're not poisonous, but the problem is, is this the stem here, or the spine here, is very, very sharp, it's like a needle. So we wanna make sure that we take this out, that we don't give this to one of our guests because that could really hurt them. So we need four of those. Four, and that's a baby one. So I'm gonna put another baby one in. That's five, so I'm gonna remember I had five. All right, now I'm gonna stir this up. I'm gonna turn it back on. I'm gonna let this simmer, bring it to a simmer. 10 minutes uncovered so it's going to thicken and all those flavors are going to come together oh i forgot my salt can't forget the salt we would definitely know there wasn't any salt in there okay so i need two teaspoons of salt and i'm just using kosher salt and we're not putting any black pepper in there because we put a lot of cayenne pepper in All right, so I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer and let it go for 10 minutes, and then we will be back. So it's been 10 minutes and it's been simmering. It looks so good. It's thick thickened up a little bit. So, oh, the smell is just amazing. So next, what you wanna do is go ahead and add your shrimp.
give this a good stir. And I have a mixture in here of 13, 15 pound shrimp and also 16, 20. I just grabbed whatever was, was on sale at the time and I just throw it in my freezer and then I wait for a time when I can use it. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in some of the upcoming videos about meal planning and how to save money. So, all the shrimp are tucked down in. Looking good. I'm gonna put the cover on this and I'm gonna bring it up to a boil. Okay. And I'm going to boil it for 10 to 20 minutes. Probably more like 15, I'll go ahead and check it and see how they're doing. Um, you know, shrimp, um, you don't wanna overcook them. It doesn't take much, does, does not take long at all to cook them. In fact, I'll probably start checking them about 10 minutes. So in the meantime too, I also went ahead and got some rice started. So in here is just some water, salt, uh, rice, and butter. And it's just the, the orange package. You know, you know which one I'm talking about, just plain old white rice. So when the 10 minutes is up, I'll be back. So the rice just finished and I put a little bit here in this serving plate. And I want to go ahead and show you what the shrimp creole looks like. So I let this simmer on a low boil for about 10 minutes and the shrimp, oh, there's a bay leaf. I was missing one. Okay, number five. Um, the shrimp still looked a little bit underdone. So I just let those rest in here for a little bit. Now, while the shrimp was finishing. Now, if you want to make this ahead of time, it's the perfect dish to do that. What you do is you do everything up until you add the shrimp. Then um, what you do is just bring it up to a boil and add the shrimp and just cook the shrimp in there. That's all you need to do. It is actually one of those dishes that gets better over time. So if you wanna make this a couple days ahead of time, um, it, it's perfect to do that. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how I serve it. So I get some rice, I get some shrimp with the juice. And serve it right on top with some of those yummy vegetables. Lots of juice. And then what we like to do is we put additional hot sauce on. So I know my boys will definitely be, be going after the Old Bay. They love Old Bay. So after that, go ahead and just sprinkle a little bit of parsley. And there you go, a delicious weeknight meal. And also it's elegant enough for a dinner party if you're having friends over. They'll be so impressed with this and it's super easy. So I hope you all enjoy this. Please let me know if you make this and take good care.